Hey! Hi, everyone! Happy Hi, everyone. Saturday! <laughs> happy, happy days. As you know, I'm Jen. I'm in Singapore, and that's Percy in the Philippines and Ange in Hong Kong. And welcome to Dear Future Grandkids. This is the show where we ask an interesting guest the big question. What would you say to your future grandkids? So, how are you all doing today? Thank you so much to everybody who joined us live on Facebook and live on YouTube. I just want to say, guys, I really look forward to the show because we've been meeting so many fascinating people. And uh, even the ones that I thought I knew well, I, I get fascinated by the answers that they give on the show. How about you, Ange? Yeah, the show's been brilliant. Such a chance to connect with great people. And we had uh, Elijah's wisdom beyond his years. We had Azura's laugh. Um, Cindy's bookshelf, uh, Asha's <laughs> honesty, uh, Thor and his incredible adventures. It's been really brilliant. What about you, The vacuum Jen? cleaner, the vacuum cleaner, remember that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and sales of vacuum cleaners have just risen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, by stock. I think Angie said it all as well. I mean, it's amazing to hear all these stories and to connect with new people and to learn about their wisdom and also hang out with old friends. And of course, who can forget just um, how some people really value vacuum cleaners. <laughs> it's just completely beyond me. But I mean, to be honest, I mean, I look forward to this every Saturday and it's a highlight of my week, getting to work on something I love and doing it with you guys and friends, you know, and which is who our next guest is. So today we're building a video time capsule for a person who started her career in 2006 when she was the first runner up at the Miss Singapore Universe pageant, which led her to a contract with Media Corp in Singapore. Now, she then went on to host and act on English and Chinese shows on television, and she's graced numerous magazine covers. She's definitely a travel, fitness, wakeboard, and netball junkie. She's also one of the first local Singaporean personalities to leave television and carve out a career as an independent content creator. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jade Xia. Hey. Yay! Hi, guys! Hey, Jade! Hey, Jade! Hey, Jade. Hey, Jade. Hey, Jade. Jade, how are you guys? Jade, so nice to see you. I know. I know you love seeing me, right, Jen? I've started your weekend uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to be honest, Jade, uh, the reason why you're on the show is we couldn't find anyone else. So, yeah, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying yes, Jade. Thank you for saying yes to Jen. I know that was very difficult for you. That was difficult, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jake. All right. Our show looks at, you know, stories from the past so you can think about our future selves. When you think about yourself as a grandmother, what do you imagine? Ah. Uh, That's what wow. we imagine. Yeah, take a look at that. Oh, you, wow. you, you look fabulous. Yeah, actually, I look quite fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Oh, stop it, Jake. I think I would be a... Oh, that's a fabulous grandmother. I walking it as a grandma, man. Wow. Yeah. Wow, you look sophisticated. So yeah. You're, That's yeah. A, maybe not the crop top. Sophisticated. <laughs> you look good in a crop top at the age of 70. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's, maybe let's, I might be thinking the crop top, but uh, otherwise, I think I'll be one of those fun grandmas, you know? I, I, I imagine I'll still have the same amount of energy or similar and drive all the other old ladies nuts. As it is at this age, I'm driving everyone my age nuts, right? And and younger, they're like, where do you get the energy? I'm like, I don't know. That's my secret power, I guess. Yeah, I was looking at your, I was looking at your vlogs and you do about 20, 25 things in a day compared to everyone else and you eat a lot as well. <laughs> yes. Do you know, I, you just... I stopped posting everything because people are well, alarmed. They're like, how do you find that much time in a day? I'm like, yeah, so I probably post about 60% of what I do. Just so no that way. it doesn't seem as <laughs> That's I mean, just 60% of what you do in a day. Wow. Yeah. Your story... You, you can make time stop, I guess. You can make time yeah. stop, yeah. You, you have more than 24 hours. You have more That's than 24 hours. You're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jade, we want to get to know you better. We've got some very quick fire questions for you. Quick questions, quick All answers. Right. In three right. words, All how right. are you feeling right now? Now I'm feeling excited. 
uh, happy and very blessed, actually. You know, Aww. since I've been on this show, I feel like I've made it. <laughs> I feel like this is the height of my career. Right, I can I can retire now. Basically, it's all downhill from here, Jade. It's all downhill. It's all downhill from here. You Aww. you can say to you can say to them, look, I'm done, guys, because I've been on Dear Future Grandkids. Yeah, yeah. So I feel I feel very blessed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us where you were born. Uh, I am born, bred, everything in Singapore. I'm like a true blue Singapore kid. Wow. Oh, what was your first celebrity crush? Okay, I don't even know if anyone knows this guy, but okay. anyone remember Kavana? Yes, Kavana. I do. Yes, <laughs> the English, English, uh, British, uh, English singer back in the nineties. What really song? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Of Kavana. I got something. Kavana, to yeah. I need something. Yeah, there to you go. Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the one. So I, I got a special kind of something. I don't want to be alone. <laughs> oh my gosh, you remember? Yeah, so he had this, he had that song, and then he had another like M F E O song, and then he looked so hot in the video. I was like, who is this guy? I think that was definitely because I had no idea who this guy was. It's just that I saw his music video on MTV. Then that was how we consumed our music videos. I was like, this guy is so hot. That was definitely my first celebrity crush. So obscure, so odd, and so strange that Jen, you know who he is. I bet you I, he was your yeah. celebrity crush as well. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. The less you say you about it, that, Jay. just keep that quiet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you might have answered this question already, but what was the first song you loved? Uh, that wasn't the first song I loved. The first song I loved... Oh my gosh, it's even more embarrassing. I can't believe we're asking these questions. Anyone remember Ice Ice Baby? Of course. Of course. All right, stop. Collaborate All right, and stop. listen. I expect a brand new invention. Brand new invention. Something. Because holding me tightly. Because yeah. holding me tightly flows like a harpoon daily and nightly. Why do Ooh. I know this? Will it ever Collect stop? Collect the speaker that <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. 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 Okay. That was Ice Ice Baby, yeah. Vanilla Ice. We, we now know you too well, Jade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm speechless. Um, what was the, I was going to I was gonna say something cooler, but honestly, that was the first song that I was like, oh my gosh, and I, I, I legit learned the lyrics, all the lyrics to that song. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's um, going to be our closing credits. We're going to have Jade singing Ice Ice Baby. We should. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll take That's it out it. with a rap. Yeah, we'll um, take it out with a rap. Okay, I'm interested to hear the answer to this then. What's the first movie or TV show that you loved? Oh, well, you know what? I wasn't that big on TV. I, I really just watched a lot of MTV and that was it. Oh, 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 oh. I remember there was a child, the one cartoon that I liked, because even as a child, I never really made time to watch TV. It wasn't my thing. It was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I really Ooh. thought I was my kid. yeah that was and that was like the only cartoon that I would like beg my parents like we gotta rush back by this time because there wasn't stuff on demand then okay it was like a time thing like 9 a.m and 9 a.m like you couldn't just like catch up on YouTube yeah. but I think that was like the first and only cartoon that I really really liked Teenage wow. Mutant Ninja Turtles you yeah. were such a 90s kid <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell that is so 90s <laughs> Kawabanga. 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 Okay, Jake. We've yeah. got more questions. We're starting to be wary about what the answers will be. <laughs> you should, you should. Yeah, we're getting a bit afraid there. Okay, what did you want to be when you grow up? Um I actually have problems with this, you know, because in school, in primary school, they would ask you, like, what's your ambition? What do you want to be? I don't think, why they ask primary school kids this? It was very traumatizing because at that point, everyone wanted to be, like, a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor. I never wanted to be any of these. And I would usually just lie because it was easy. I would just pick an occupation that I thought was easy, like policemen. Um, I think I only, yeah, yeah, I think I only really had an inkling of what I wanted to be when I was maybe primary four or five. And then it was between two things. So one was either a rock star, because that's when I used to watch Bon Jovi on on, <laughs> on MTV. And I was like, 
there was my other celebrity crush, John Bon Jovi, and I was like, wow, if I were a rock star, not only could I meet him, I could be on TV and I could be like rocking it out with many people. So I wanted to be a rock star. And the other was when I was probably five or six and I used to watch a lot of football because my dad, we watched like the dream team and stuff. I wanted to be Fandi Ahmad. So I wanted to be like a professional athlete. Yeah, I wanted to. <laughs> so so, so you wanted to be John Bon Jovi and then you wanted to be Fandi Ahmad, uh, Singapore's most yeah. famous striker. But then with John Bon Jovi, you then, when you started to sing, then you realized that that was never going to happen. <laughs> that, yeah. I still I still do bad out to Bon Jovi when we karaoke and it's really bad. Like my neighbor literally we had he had a little house party for the neighbors in the area and I asked him if because I have house parties too, if, if like any of my parties the noise bugs him, he's like, No, just some nights there's some really bad singing. <laughs> <laughs> I literally said that there's some really bad singing and I think it's because someone lent me a karaoke machine. Right? And then And you're singing and I had bon some Jovi. friends over yeah, he did some really bad singing. I didn't ask him what song, but I think he meant the Bon Jovi. <laughs> living out of prayer. You're Bless living out him. of prayer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know, <laughs> what was what what wound up to be your first job? My first job, um, my first job was actually as a model when I was thirteen. I was spotted and asked to go for an audition and my parents were very against it my mom i think my dad was okay but my mom was very against it um i can't remember i don't think i told her so i think i was asked i was spotted at the shopping center now she knows right? and then i went for audition yeah i went for audition and then my first job was as a model for a singtel campaign like it was i remember a singtel and it was only after the picture came out that i kind of told her like i went for this thing and then, and then she was really like disturbed about this whole modeling thing. She was not, I mean, she was supportive, but she was very cautious, right? But I kind of did it before I told her. So that was my first, first job. And How, then did that, second, How did you spend the money? How did you spend the money? You know, I was really, I was really a sensible kid. I, I put it in, I asked my uncle whether I could invest it. And I put, I remember it was $1,500 and I put it in unit trust. <laughs> yeah. No way. Whoa. Yeah, you exactly. were 13? That's a lot of money. Then. Yeah, it was a lot of money. Wow. Like you, 500, a lot of money. You were 13, 13 and you looked at your uncle and you said, uh, uh, excuse me, I'd like to invest it in a high yield, <laughs> yes. low risk unit, trust please. <laughs> and I remember he bought me like, it, it wasn't delivered, but he it was Singtel shares that I bought in unit what? trust. For real? Yeah. Okay. I, don't, I, I, I don't remember how this happened, but it, it, it just was. And... Yeah, I was quite a sensible kid when it came to money, I guess, because my dad was always a saver, so I just put wow. it in unit trust. <laughs> yeah, strange. Wow. That's, a, that's a good we lesson. Just, we just went from yeah. this kid who, who listens to Bon Jovi and Cavana yeah. and doesn't know what she wants to be when she grows up, and then suddenly cuts to she's 13 years old and she puts her money in a trust fund. I know. Yeah, but you see, right, that kind of sums it up for me. I guess I, I don't really know what I want exactly, but I kind of... I'm sensible in my own strange way. So yeah, I guess that kind of sums it up. <laughs> no, that's amazing. It just means that when you're yeah. you know, actually confronted by it, you, you always do the right thing, I guess. Because we I would wish buy my mom more. knew this. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wish she knew this <laughs> <in> the team. <laughs> I mean, to, to be honest, I mean that's so interesting. But what I really want to find out was was there no one else at the audition? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think there was no one else. I think there was like one other girl and probably no one else. And then when I went for the shoot, right, I still remember this is my very first shoot and it was Mark Law who shot it. I don't think he remembers this. Oh, uh, it's right. a famous so uh, photographer, Singapore. Yeah. yeah, Mark. Very famous. Yeah. And then so I was supposed to be like, it was a very normal couple shoot with this guy and he was much shorter than me. He had to stand on an apple box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still remember this. And I was like, like, damn, why did they get me like a hot and tall guy? <laughs> you were 13. Oh, I was 13. 13. Both, both he and I were like low budget talent. So, you know, we probably got the job because we were like low, low budget talent. We had no agency. I had no agency. It was just like off the street. Like, here, here's $1,500 to do like a Singtel ad. They had way a lot of loading fees that never got, I never got the loading fees. Never knew what that was at 13. <laughs> Bad. Okay, that was your yeah. first job. What was your yeah. best job? What was the best job you ever had? 
So after that, I mean, that was my first job. At 15, I went on to be a waitress. I was rubbish at it. Um, spilled drinks on someone on the second day of the job. Oh. Um, and then I sold um, cosmetics. I actually Ooh. sold cosmetics um, when I was 15 as well. And I actually really enjoyed it because that's where I learned to put on makeup. I remember I went for, for work and then one of the girls was like, you can't... Um, you can't sell cosmetics and not know how to wear it. So the girls actually dolled me up and they, they taught me that was basically how I learned to put on makeup. And that was kind of like a real good thing at 15. I thought that was really cool. Wow. I don't know if that's my best job. My best job is now, man. Now I get to interview fun people. I get to be interviewed by fun people and I get to kind of say no to stuff that I don't want to do anymore. It's, it's I think this, I am living my best job now. Yeah, you awesome. can say no. That really is the best job. <laughs> when you can say no to gigs you don't want to do. <laughs> yeah, that's the best feeling, isn't it? Like, you know, totally in control like of really your career. You know? It really is. Thank, the best you for, feeling. thank you for asking me, but no, I don't want to do it. <laughs> the power, the power is in your power. hands. And of course, Jade. Yeah. I mean, checking out your social media, and um, we know that you love food, and I, I don't know where it all goes because you eat so much and eat so much all the time. But um, if you could only eat one thing or one dish for the rest of your life, what could it be? I mean, I already know the answer, but I think you should share it with everyone. Uh, it would be mee pok or bak chor mee, <laughs> as we call it in Singapore. Actually, it's any form of noodles because I don't really, honestly, I don't like any other form of carbs. I don't like rice. I don't like potatoes. I, I eat bread. I don't really like it. I really like noodles and pasta and my favorite dish is this local Singapore dish for all our non-Singaporean friends called Mee Pok. And it's like a thin noodle, like a fettuccine. It's served with pork lard, lots of it, chili, <clears throat> onion-ish oil, sesame oil. I don't know what else they put in it, like magic probably. And then it's... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. It's served with either fish balls or meatballs and pork. And it's, it's really good. It's the one dish that I will crave every time I'm away from Singapore for a long time and the one dish that I cannot find anywhere else in the world. You Malaysians, I know you guys lay claim, like we, we fight, right? Malaysia, Singapore, we fight over like who has the best chak kway teow. Unfortunately, I still think it's Penang, not being unpatriotic, but I'm just being real about it. We fight over That's who true. has the best chicken That's rice. True. Chicken rice, Singapore, I think still wins. Uh, we no. fight over who has the best wonton mee, right? Wonton mee, I think it's a, it's a draw because it's different. You can't really compare. Malaysia style is like black saucy. Singapore style is like very spicy. I like both. Uh, but when it comes to bar chow mee or mee pok, right, you guys don't have it. There's nothing that you have in Malaysia that's like that. I think the closest you have is kolo mee and it's different. Like in Sarawak, there's kolo mee, but it's it's not like that. So that's a, I feel like the true blue Singapore dish you can't get anywhere else in the world. And is my top thing, favorite thing to eat. I eat it way too often. Sometimes yeah. I don't post. I think I just had one two days ago at a, a stall that I've never tried before and I haven't posted that yet because I know Jen says like, you can eat this every day. I literally can eat this every day. <laughs> you're a bonkers yeah, when it sorry, comes to that. You know, you eat that like four or five to five times a week, right? At least if you're in Singapore. Yeah, I would say it's like my <laughs> default. If I go to a hawker center and I have no idea what to eat, that would be it. If I have no mood to eat, like some days I'm like, oh, not much of an appetite, but I smell that and I'll be like, yeah, I'm on, man. It's on. Right. So it's, it's kind of like the, the mood booster and the default all in one. <laughs> yeah, so so that, that to me is kind of like a strange habit, but do you have a strange habit or a ritual other than eating meat pork? <laughs> um, I don't like to sleep in. I, I, okay. I don't like to sleep. I don't know if that's a strange habit or ritual, but if I... If I've had a hard night, like, you know, like a hard night out or partying and I happen to wake up a bit later than I usually do, I wake up in a bad mood. I love the mornings and I feel very upset if I wake up past a certain time. Like, I feel like I've wasted the morning, you know? So, what like, time? What time? Ideally, the time that I like to wake up, if I could wake up every day at this time, would be 7 because then you can watch the sunrise and watch the sun stream into the house, watch the house get brighter. But it's not always possible if I sleep really late. So... If I wake up past 9, I feel like that's very late. And if I wake up past 10, I feel like I've wasted the day. And I, I, I legit feel grouchy and like in a bad mood. And then I feel like I need to catch up. <laughs> so it's a, it's a bit strange because I know there's a lot of talk about how waking up early is good for you and all that. But mine is like, I kind of beat myself up if I wake up past 9 or 10. I can't, I can't, I can't sleep in like that. I wake up and go get her, aren't you? 
seize the day. Yeah, I, yeah. So that's a strange habit. Like I like to just wake up and, and, and start the day. It's a good habit, though. <laughs> Very good habit. Yeah, but, but it's taken to extremes with me. That's why I felt the need to say that I, I have problems, you know, when I wake up too late. <laughs> And also, I mean, in, through the course of, of your career, you, you've worked with um, a lot of uh, people. And um, besides me, who's the most fascinating person you've ever worked with? Definitely <laughs> not you. The bar has been set very low. The bar has been set very low. We can, all, we can all say definitely not Jen. All of us. What? Not, yeah. Look at that. Oh my so, God. Is that look at the background. We used that to work on a... Yeah, on the show called Sports at SG at Media Cup Channel okay. 5. This is a sports show. I love how your through. hand is in Jen's way. That's how it yeah. shows. Yeah. Your, your Jen, hand in Jen's face. Ever. Jen, that's your oh best my photo. Best photo. Yeah. So, so basically, that photo, photo. That, that photo encapsulates <laughs> what it's like working with Jade and presenting on a show together. She's always just hand in your face. <laughs> Enough about you, more about me. Go away. Go away. <laughs> Honestly, honestly, <clears throat> hate to have to feed Jen's ego on this. I really had a lot of fun working with Jen. It was like one of those, like, it was very early in my career, right? And a lot of people, I don't know if I get in trouble for saying this, but I feel like a lot of people in this line take themselves too seriously. <clears throat> really, really, like, um, who gets, you know, it, it's as silly as, Jen, I'm sure you know this, like when we do like live shows or whatever, a lot of people actually, it matters to them who gives the opening line, yes. who gives the closing yes. line. Yes. You know, it's like, hi, I'm Jade, and this is Jen. You know, yeah. people people yeah. fight to say stuff like that, right? Whereas for Jen and I, it's really like, uh, you want to go first, or you want to go first, or sometimes don't even discuss it. It's just like whoever. Yeah. And yeah. Um, a lot of people are really upset by who says the closing line, like, hi, this has been Jade. See you guys soon. Bye. Right. Yeah. So then someone will actually sometimes try to talk over you and say, oh, this is uh, so and so. Like, see you next week. Even though I've just said that, right? So, but I think with Jen, it was very interesting, and I. I hate to say it, but I really appreciate that this only as I went further along in my career, because I was very fresh when we hosted that, right? And it's only after I met a whole bunch of other people. <laughs> I was quite thankful to meet someone like Jen, like who was so chill about everything. We literally like had such, we never rehearsed anything. I think we drove our producer nuts. Let, like, let's not tell everyone that. <laughs> we literally like, we will look at the script like, <laughs> and we're like, okay, uh, shall we just do this? And it was so chill. It was so off the cuff. And it was so like, I guess I learned that that's pretty much my style as well. But it's just that I got that so early in my career, I only appreciated that later on. So, so you know, when I would have scripts and stuff later on, I'll try to memorize them. And, and it was only later that I was like, you know what, I work best when it's just like, I just have pointers. And we just go. And, and Jen and I, we would just go. And I have a show now with Andy Chen. Right. And, and I think we, we're both at the stage in our career where we know that that's how we are. So we actually make it a point not to discuss what we're going to talk about. So our show is called The Catch Up and we talk about three or four like current affairs things. Right. It's very loose. So we would just text each other like, shall we talk about this, this, this? And then we'll get on. And then we're like, OK, so what do you have to say about this? And then he'll start to say something. And then one of us will say, OK, don't say anything anymore. Like, say it live. Say it live. You know, like, say it live. Let's like just not... Um, Let's just not discuss it. And this yeah. is something that I learned very early on in my career, but it only crystallized as I, as the years went by. I was like, this is the best way for me to work. So Jen, yeah, I have to say thank you, even though you're like a horrible friend. Like, that, <laughs> like I learned yes. it really, really early on with you. Well, I, Jade, I think, I think uh, we need to check this because I think something is wrong here. When we said we're, Jade Sia is going to be live on the show, this is not Jade Sia because Jade Sia would never say anything nice about me. It's yeah. impossible. Come on, find her. What happened to nice her? About you. I can't believe. Oh my gosh! You know what, guys? I just realized I have this pillow behind that says "Bachao Me." I just have to show you this. Show me. Show us. Show us. <laughs> She's so I've random. Never met anybody so passionate about one dish? Yeah. You really yeah. do like your bachao Me, huh? So someone gave this to me, but I sorry, I, I forgot I had this. And then when 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 you guys uh, zoomed out the shot, I was like, yeah. So this is the dish. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, that was very random. I know we were talking about something else. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, we were talking about Jen, but that's not important. <laughs> Why? Let's go so back to the dish. I yeah. will always, I will always be replaced by a bak chow mee pillow. <laughs> that, that's how it yeah. works. <laughs> but that's probably the nicest thing I've ever said about Jen. And uh, but it's true. It's true. It's all true. And 
I think he's in shock now that I said something so nice about him. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm in absolute shock, but, but, but head on heart as well. I mean, working with you was always great because as people will discover throughout the show as well, um, and if they get to know you, you are just an honest person and you are true to yourself. Uh, what you see is what you get. So in this industry, when you work on it for so many years, I mean, people always have a shield or they're not really yeah. themselves or they're pretty fake, but you've always just been who you are. And I, and, and, and I like that. And then that's what's so likable about you. And um, yeah. And so I'm really happy for all your success so far, but thanks for replacing me with a buck show me <laughs> pillow, but I'm glad that everyone gets to know you a little bit better. And I'm sure there's quite a lot of um, questions coming out and comments as well on YouTube and on Facebook. And we'll do our best to try to get some of the questions read out. Maybe you can answer them. Okay. But all remember, right. Jade, you can't take this back now. We have this on your video time capsule that you actually said I was the most fascinating and best person you've ever met. <laughs> so you're gonna live. You've got to live with that. So thank you. My job is done. I got. I can leave the show now. Jade, like Jade, we can, we can give you the file so you can edit it out. Yeah. If you want. All right. That's, that's what I'm gonna we'll edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> Everything can be removed in post. Everything can be removed. Yes. Yep. Yes. All right, Jade. <laughs> Now, on the show, we have no shame. We love nosying <laughs> around people's apartments. That's kind of the reason why we do it. Do you have a corner of your place that's super shameful that most of your audience never get to see? Ooh. Um, yeah, so I usually take my place from this angle just because the light is the best. But I have this corner of shame. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. We want to mm. see the corner of shame. You want corner of shame. Oh my gosh. Okay, corner okay, of shame. Corner, the of corner of shame. shame. Hang on, because I have I have these guys on um live. Okay, you guys gonna get to see the corner of shame. Oh. Oh wow. Right. Are you live on Instagram as well? Oh, yeah, I'm wow. live on Instagram. So. Let's oh, how do I dip this entire laptop? Hang on. Let me figure this out. You know the wow, show is, is live. That's why this is special. Yeah, that's that's why. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna turn this around without like unplugging things. Okay. Jeez, guys, you're all like testing me. Okay, so that's my corner of shame. Oh. What's going on there? What's so shameful about that? So yeah. that's my air purifier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then that whole bunch are my soft toys. <laughs> oh, on the chair. Oh, yeah. yeah. You yeah. have a collection. You don't strike me as someone who would collect. Soft you toys. don't strike me as someone who yeah. collect little cute soft toys. And That's the thing. Cool. I don't strike anyone as someone who will collect little cute soft toys, but I do. So. <laughs> I mean, you're someone who Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was your thing growing <laughs> up. So. And, and Bon Jovi. That's true. Uh, but somehow the little cute soft toys um, joined along the way. <laughs> oh, that's so, that's so funny. And you've, have you been collecting them or people gift them to you? Oh crap, hang on. I'm trying to get this back on. <laughs> you're good. It's so messy. You're good, you're good. Oh my god. No, oh my you're gosh. good. You're good. All right. yeah, 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 you At any angle, you still will look better. It's fine. <laughs> Again? <laughs> this is like the messiest like, live thing I've done. Uh, no, I mean, I, I just really like soft toys and people give them to me and I also collect them. And yeah, so I've, I've actually, it's gotten to the point where I have to tell myself to stop buying. Soft toys, because I have too many. Wow. Is there a particular kind of stuff, soft toy? Like I like teddy bears. Teddy I like bear, teddy bears, teddy bear. but I like most most stuffed animals, but especially bears. I don't know why, but <laughs> I know uh -huh. it's very random. I'm a very random yeah. person. Hang on, I need to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, love, I love this. See, this is what I love about you, and I love that it's live. That, that's that's that what it's you would live. do anyway. Yeah. 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 Sorry. I, I think this. I don't know why. It's the I, dust. Like, it's the dust yeah, from the teddy bears. The dust from the corner of shame. I think it's the teddy bears. Mm. It's the corner of, of shame. It's the corner of shame. Yeah. <laughs> so, so obviously, you know, we've had a little bit of a chat. So obviously, now we have uh, let slip that we both have worked together. So everyone knows yes. that. So that means I, I already know that you have a pointless skill, and that's presenting. <laughs> oh, Jack. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> that is so rude, I'm telling you. He's so rude. He's so rude. He is so rude. Okay, we're going to replace you, Jen, for the rest of the show with the Bat Choi Me Pillow. Yeah, please. Pillow. Yeah, yeah. Let me have my Bat Choi Me Pillow. Before my episode. Exactly. <laughs> okay, 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 great. Sorry about that, but seriously, do you have any other pointless skill? 
Um. Okay, how about I? Because I play netball, right? So and I play a lot of sports. So I think I have the skill of being able to catch most things on cue. Meaning, if you just go a hey, catch, I would be able. Oh crap! I would be able to catch it. <laughs> yeah, you got you got your laptop there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well done. That's well done. You did good. So yeah, is it so, part of like being an athlete or something? You want to be you wanted to be an athlete. Is it some kind of training that you you did? No, I think it's just reflexes, really. And um, so when my brother was young, because he's thirteen years younger than me, I wanted to train his reflexes because I thought I could make him an athlete, right? So I would just like say, "Hey, Sean, catch!" and then I'll throw him something, and then. I was disappointed at his reaction because instead of you kind of can tell, you know, he would do this <laughs> instead of catching it, right? So I would like throw pillows at him like randomly just to test him, and I think that's my pointless skill. If you threw something at me, I would probably catch it. Let me let's see if there's something I can throw at you. Yeah, like that. <laughs> no, I don't want to break this. Maybe not that. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> um, this this remote. Okay. Can you, can you catch oh, it? Yeah, throw it at me. Yeah, yeah, throw it at you. No right, okay. way. You, you got to catch it there in Singapore. I'm here in the Philippines. You know, this is going to be the longest it. show ever of a remote. I think this is going to be a first All in right. Guinness history. Okay, and three, okay. two, one, and go. Oh! Oh, my God. I'm going. It's my pointless skill, but I have a pointless skill. And I have no remote. <laughs> Wow. No, no, pass yeah. it to me, Jade. Jade, come on. I'm okay, in. Okay, can you catch yeah. it? Can you catch it? Yeah, come on. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Whoa! <laughs> oh my god, Percy, you'll never <laughs> ever be able to change your TV channels ever again. That's it, Percy. You're stuck with okay, I'm channel sending it back to on. Singapore. I'm sending it, Jen. Jen, you ready? Okay, okay. I don't want to be left Jen. out. Okay, okay. okay. Three, so, two, yeah. one. Wow! <laughs> I got it too. I've got the JTR skills. Jen, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just pick it up from your house yeah. now. <laughs> hey, Percy, Percy, I've got it now. Too bad. You, Do you want need, it back? You need, you need to, you need to give it back to me. My kids are you gonna be back? mad at me. Yeah, please, yeah, please give you. it back to me. All right, right I'm you just go. above you. I'm just above you. Ego, 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 ego. Are you going higher, higher? Ego. Oh my god! Ego. Oh my god! <laughs> 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 Thank you, Jen. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was Fedex the most pointless so... five minutes ever, guys. Yeah, this that is was the a... most pointless, pointless live five, five minutes, minutes ever. Yes. People are dying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've outdid ourselves with the pointless skill. Yeah. I think a lot did. of people dropped off by now because of that. Yeah. <laughs> I think we lost about 50% of our viewers there. Like, okay, okay yeah. these guys are just doing stupid things now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from that, from ja that, Jade, we want to we want you to pick up two mementos that maybe came from your travels or came from your career, and tell us about them. Two things. Wow. Two things. Like now? Yeah. yeah. You have thirty seconds. You have thirty Go. seconds. All right, all right. While, while Jen talks <laughs> about you. Well, as you can see, Jade Sa is not the most coordinated person in the world, and she can barely do two things at once. So it's a surprise that she can actually spoon some noodles into a spoon and eat it. So, yeah. Wait, so where did you work together? Where so we work, to we work together in MediaCorp Channel 5, which is the uh, uh, terrestrial TV station here, and we work on a show called Sports at SG. So basically, uh, it was a long-running series for about two years, so it's a lead-up to the uh, Youth Olympic Games. Uh, the Asian Games and Sea Games. So we basically interviewed all kinds of uh, national athletes, but also about sporting activities. Um, it was a weekly show and we had a lot of fun. So we, we went around um, all over the island. Uh, we tried a lot of sport as well. And uh, actually, to be fair, Jade, Jade's very sporty and, and she's pretty good. So yeah, we worked on the front project and the pictures earlier was um, I hosted a, um, a show about Formula One, going around to um, um, all the races and uh, with the Singtel Great Girls at the time. And Jade was our first guest. So that was in, in Melbourne. So safe oh, to say, wow. we, we worked in Melbourne there. Safe to say for that four days that we were there, Melbourne ran out of food. <laughs> <laughs> Noodles in particular. Yeah. Wait, and I've, how I've many got, years I've, ago? How many years ago was that? Uh, this is back in 2000 and ooh, long, 12 years ago, 10 years ago. 12 years ago. And you've been friends yeah. ever since. 
Oh, she's yeah. back. Jane's yeah. back. Come on, not show and tell. Not, not the pillow. Cheap, I just I pulled stuff off my fridge. <laughs> so this is a a magnet yeah. from Ooh. Empress Base Camp. So this oh, was wow. um yeah, so this was uh in twenty eighteen, I think two years ago. I went on this trip on a whim. Uh, and I really mean a whim because I, I, I met a friend that I hadn't seen in a while. I met her at a party. And then she was she told me she was gonna go to do Everest Base Camp the month after. Right. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I've always wanted to go. She said, Why don't you come with us? I'm like, Who's us? I didn't even know the other two people. She said they were supposed to be a party of four, but someone dropped out because of a health problem or family problem. So she's like, Why don't you replace him? I was like, Really? And then so I didn't know, I only knew one person. I hadn't prepared for it, but I decided to bite the bullet and just go. And it's one of like the best trips ever. Really, really one of the best trips ever. And we made, um, I made such fast friends with the people on those trip, on that trip. And yeah, it was it was amazing. And we've gone on to climb other mountains together since we were planning to go to Kilimanjaro this year. It didn't happen, obviously. But um, yeah, that's we we just I just met those people last night, and we said once uh, the borders open up again, we will book that Kilimanjaro trip. Wow, on a whim. Yeah. On a whim, I know. I mean, ever, <laughs> ever is not something you do on a whim normally. You kind of have to train for it and have the right Yeah. But... So I was a bit worried. I remember the night before I panicked because I'm kind of last minute. So I kind of like had the... I leave my packing to the really last minute. It was 2 a.m. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was just stressing suddenly that I didn't have everything. And I was getting really, really stressed up. And what if I wasn't fit enough to do this? But why did I agree to do this? And then, and then yeah. Wow. I just went... Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. You've got a second item. Well, like I said, I cheated because I pulled another magnet off my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know where that is. I, I I love it that you went around your house and we saw it and basically just pulled off the fridge. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is so easy. So this is a magnet from Bhutan, and oh, um, actually. it was. Yeah. So I I, I went to Bhutan for work, which I thought was. It's one of the it's reasons of the why, reasons like, why I think I feel, I feel very blessed a lot of the time that we, uh, when you ask what my favorite, my best job was, I feel like I am living my best job because I only do things I want to do. And I went to Bhutan on a client trip. And it's one of those places that I think I may have always wanted to go to, but not sure I would ever have managed to make it to. Um, but everything was set up for me. It was, it was hard work. Don't get me wrong when we were there. It was a lot of shooting. But it was one of those things that just reminds me how lucky I am to be be able to do this right and then so that magnet's just kind of a reminder of that wow oh. it's one of my, i've been 10 times to bhutan always oh. for work yeah and it's i i unlike you i i hadn't even really properly heard of it and yeah when someone uh offered me to go to bhutan i actually thought they said bintan um <laughs> yeah just off singapore the island right and yeah. um i i had no clue i had to google it I didn't know anything. I really didn't know anything. Uh, yeah. Now I've been 10 times and there's just something so unique, so magical, unbelievable. It's indescribable, right? Yeah. Yeah, it really is. So, I mean, I feel like sometimes when, you know, it's not every job that I really like, every job that I take on, but I always remind myself that, you know, it's, it's, it's just a blessing to be able to like what I do. Not everyone can say that. And to be able to have that control at this point in my career to decide on what I want to do. It's like a double whammy of like good feeling. And I'm like, yeah, actually I shouldn't complain. Even though like maybe I don't like the ace job. I just get on with it. Yeah, sometimes you have to um, step back a little bit and think about the great things that you have. And it sounds like you really do. You, you really do yeah. have a wonderful, wonderful career. And, a, uh, you know, you get to say no to things. You get to travel and you get paid to do so. It's all really great. Yeah. Right. Well, we're going to learn a little bit more about your family right now. So we want to hear okay. about your parents, who they were, and who they are, and what did you inherit or learn from them? Uh, my parents are really, like, in Singapore, we will say typical heartlanders, right? So it's funny because for some strange reason, people, a lot of people think I'm from a rich family, which is, I told my dad this, and he thought it was very funny. Oh, <laughs> look at that photo. Like, he, thought, he, thought, he legit thought it was funny, right? Because... Um, my parents are like the most normal, typical Singaporean, like I, I, you know, the typical, like I grew up in a Tampines HDB and then we moved to like a bigger flat later when like 
my brother and I were born, but we've just always stayed in like the heartlands. My dad was in construction. He still is, uh, although he's taken on a lot more of a freelance role as well, right? But before he would like help to manage like a construction project. So I guess you can say he was a, I mean, when I was young, it's so funny. I remember we had these things that they ask kids in school, right? Other than what's your ambition? They used to ask, what does your father do? And then I, I told my teacher, he's a construction worker. Because to me, he's always had like the helmet yeah. and the boots and I always thought he was a construction worker. And then later on, my mom said, no, he's a construction manager. I was like, what's the difference? It's the same thing. I mean, <laughs> to a young child, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. So I, I always used to just say that my dad's a construction worker. So he was in construction for many years and he also drove a taxi for a while. And then uh, my mom was a nurse. She's only recently retired in the last year um, and a half. And she's really happy being retired, you know, but... She, she worked as a nurse. I think she went to nursing school when she was like 16 or something, straight out of all levels. So she's just done that her whole life. And yeah, really super normal family. But for some reason, like people always guess that I'm from a rich family. So I like to think it's because we're classic. <laughs> <laughs> Says the Bon Jovi fan. Yes, and the Ice Ice Baby fan. The vanilla Ice Baby, oh my God, that's so bad. <laughs> So from your parents, uh, let's talk about your long, long suffering husband, Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> he's mean, really long suffering because he, I thought he was, yeah, there he is. <laughs> he's tearing <laughs> out. But he said he's going to the gym and I was like, I can, people can see you in the background later when I, he's like, uh, then he sighed very loudly. Right. And I, I legit say, what time are you going? Aren't you going to the gym? Because I'm going to do a live and you can't be walking around the house. My house is very small. So it's like you walk around, you can see everyone walking around because it's open concept. <laughs> well, the follow-up question to that is why why has he not left you yet? <laughs> uh, yeah, Damn, actually, run, like, run now, run away. <laughs> He's chuckling to himself, I bet you. Um, I like to think, right, because I'm like the most I'm not the easiest person to be with. Honestly, I, I will say that honestly. Um, but I think it's because I bring the excitement to his life and the fun. He'll be so boring without me. I always tell him this. It's not even a joke. Like, yeah, I always say you're such a boring person, but I bring such fun to your life. And so with the fun, you got to deal with the tumultuous, you know, storms or the like, when I get into the mood to do something, then it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to clean the whole house. Like everyone got to clean the house with me. Or like, you know, I'm going through like a, a phase or whatever, right? He has to deal with all that. But then he has like such a fun and exciting partner. But well, who wouldn't want that? <laughs> Who wouldn't want that, indeed? Who wouldn't yeah. want that? No, yeah. You, you brought so much fun to my Saturday. There you go. <laughs> oh, I like to think of us. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I don't know what I did my, with my Saturdays without you. I know. <laughs> hang out every Saturday. Yeah, just hang out every Saturday. <laughs> Love to. So, well, Jay, this is my question, and it's kind of a serious one. Um, so the show is called Dear Future Grandkids, right? Yeah. And you and your husband, you don't have kids yet at the moment. Yeah. Do you plan on raising a family in the near future? Um, I guess it's just not the list, not the top of our list of priorities right now. I feel like, firstly, I feel like I'm still very young. I'm not really, but I, I, I don't feel, I feel like I haven't grown up yet. So if I haven't even learned how to adult, how does one be... An adult to a, a tiny being i just feel like i'm not ready at this point or not equipped with the life skills to th actually take care of a young kid and, and make sure the kid stays alive <laughs> and the other Very thing nice. is i feel like there's so much of life that i want to experience and i'm not sure how i'm gonna do that now with with a little one in tow right so i'm not sure how to balance all of that even given my energy so i guess it's one of those things that's just not the top of my list of priorities. You know, maybe when I'm 60 or something, I might think about it. But now at this age, I feel like I feel like I'm still 20 in a lot of ways and just not ready to adult and have a kid yet. So just not not ready, yeah. No, well, actually, I really appreciate the candid answer because I think a lot of people just say it out of pressure that at a certain age, yeah. you're expected to be doing this and doing that. Uh, but it's true. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I still get the pressure. Yeah. Like, I <laughs> no, mean, but family you know, has been you know what you want. You're honest about it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, family has been great. My dad makes jokes about it, semi-jokes, half-jokes. Actually, he really means it. Like, oh, it would be so nice to have a grandchild from you. You know, mom will help to take care of her. My mom was in the maternity ward 
at Mount Avenue for like the longest time. So she really <gasps> is really good with kids. Legit, yeah. Um, but then that's the family side. And then like the, the social pressure from friends and from some people online, I've gotten people saying not very nice things, honestly, sometimes online, you know, people as online people do. Uh, take it all on my stride. I really feel like if I ever were to be a mom, I want to be like the best mom ever. And I just am not at that point where I'm mature enough to even do that. Right. And I just want to be able to, to do it properly. You know, like, like Jen, your wife, Sarah, is like, to me, a great mom. She's really there. She's like dedicated her life to bring up kids well. And I just, I feel like that's the way that I would want it to be. And I just can't commit the sort of time right now to do that and i don't want to have a kid just to have a kid and then dump it with a helper or dump it with my mom even like i feel like you need to be properly there and i'm just not ready yet to do it so yeah that that's me being really candid about it no i mean that's a good answer we we did i was telling Ange and jen that we we got uh i got a message a private message yeah. uh from a fan and and he was asking um, you know your show is great but it kind of presupposes that everybody's gonna have a grandkid um, yeah. And there are some individuals, especially in the LGBT community, that may or, yeah. may or may not have kids, may or may not have grandkids. And I'm thinking, actually, you don't have to always think of it as a biological grandkid. Yeah. There will always yes, be precisely. a child somewhere, you know, that's a grandchild, sort of like a grandchild to you. Yeah. And you would still, you could still be as close to that, that child as if it I mean, were your own. When Jen asked me to do this show, it didn't even cross my mind that I don't even have a kid yet, much less a grandkid, right? Yeah. But it was more like, like, like you say, it, and also I have a niece, like my brother has a daughter who I'm very close to, and she's my goddaughter, and I think of it as like, yeah, she would probably see this, that would be kind of like my grandkid, even though that's not biologically my grandkids, like my grandniece, or my niece, or her, like, kids would be my, excuse me, my grandnieces and nephews, and yeah, to me that's good enough, right? It doesn't have to be, like, literally your grandkid. Yeah, yeah. I think people have to have. I, I, I appreciate your answer and appreciate the opportunity to clear this up because we don't, we don't, we did not create this show like pressuring everybody to have that heteronormal yeah. definition of a family, right? Because as yeah. you said, it could be a niece, you know, a child from a niece or a child from a nephew, or, or it friend. could even be a child from a friend, right? Yeah. 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 So, and that's good because um, I think that people need to have a wider uh, definition of what family is, especially these yeah. days. Yeah, totally, totally. I mean, um, I think that kind of something. I, I I never took offense when when I heard the show was called Dear Future Grandkids, that like that meant I had to have a kid. I just thought it was just for posterity, something to say to kids. Hopefully, that might be useful to them somehow. No, yeah. no, legacy. Yeah, yeah. legacy. Yeah. It works. It works yeah. for everybody. <laughs> wow. Okay. We're now we're into the serious stuff. Okay. Jade. There's a part of the show where that we love because we love eavesdropping. I mean, we, or Ange already said that we love nosing around people's apartments. We also love eavesdropping. There you go. Um, this is this is the part of the show where we ask you to pick up your phone and uh, find somebody in your contact list and leave a meaningful voice message for that person. Somebody special in your life. You don't have to tell us who it is, but we'd like to hear what the message is. Oh my god, I'm just so nosy. Okay, my phone is doing a live. I'm going to say bye to you guys on the live and do this first and I'll come back on. Okay. All right. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? All right. Okay. So I got to leave like a voice message. Yes. Yeah. To someone, someone special in, in your life. Yeah. You don't okay. have to tell us who or she is. And so this message is for them to... Is it like a dear future grandkid sort of message? No. no. It's just it's a just meaningful message. To, wow. to, yeah. Yeah. That's hard. What if I get emo? I'm a very emo person, actually. We love emo. Yeah. Oh my god. We were You're, all right, we all right. We've cried, we've cried I think two or three times in previous oh, episodes. We did. We did. <laughs> oh my god. Right. We sobbed yeah. our heart out. Yeah, <laughs> take, take your time, take your time. Just oh have a think gosh. who you wanna call and what you'd like to say. I feel cheery just thinking about it. My gosh, I'm so bad at this kind of things. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it now. No time like the present. No day like today. Yeah. Okay. So this is a message for uh, my granny, who is uh, not with us anymore, but she was with us for many years, and she kind of was the first, one of the first few people who taught me a lot of things, like taught me how to ride a bike, um, taught me how to play blackjack. <laughs> 
Oh my god, I'm so evil just thinking about this. I guess it's just been one of the first few people who always made me feel like I wasn't that weird. I was quite weird. Right. So but like as a kid, I would ask like the weirdest questions. Actually I asked like a million questions. And she would patiently answer or that like, I would like wanna go downstairs and hang out for like hours and she would patiently go with me. And I get you. I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for everything. And that it's been hard. It's been hard the past three years with her not around. But that's kind of like the standard of like a mom that I would want to live up to. So thank you. Oh my gosh, so you. God. Oh my gosh, I, I forgot about this. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank, you yeah. thank you. Thank you. It's, thank you for sharing it's, it's, that. We yeah. already saw the kind of grandmother you will be, to whether it's your kids or your niece's kids or your friend's kids. It's quite hard to live up to that, but yeah, I, I guess so. I guess I guess to all grandmothers, like you, like, you guys are probably doing like a great job. And I don't know if she ever knew, but I guess she knew. I'm she, sure knew. she knew. I'm sure she knew. Oh, wow. thank you so much for doing that, Jade. We really oh appreciate my gosh, it. Guys. Perhaps I should have written a, a note to Jen instead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, let, let, let's let's go back and leave a message to Jen. Without the swearing. That would be less emotional for sure. Without, yeah, without the swearing. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jay, don't don't drop your standard that low. Come on. Yeah, that, that would be. You can say it this way, Jen. You know how I said you're the most fascinating person I ever met. I didn't yeah. actually say that. <laughs> I'm taking that back now. I I'm definitely take that back. I didn't actually but, say that. That little super was not me. That was the producer. I just yeah. said that he taught me something. You are backtracking now. Listen I to am, you. I am. <laughs> you, you, you are the worst. Okay. You know. You know what? Okay. Fine. I, I actually want to find out. A lot more about you. I've known you for what the past 12, 13 years, but but there's also some things that I want to know. Basically, mainly is you know what made you decide to you know start a career in, in entertainment, like getting into entertainment first. Well, wow, actually, honestly, that was so unexpected. I actually graduated and thought I'll be in advertising. So my first job was at um, a big advertising firm, and I thought that would be it. I hated some parts of it though. Like, it's very detail-oriented, you know, like, they'll be like, can you shift this, like, line, like, one mm yeah. down? And I was like, what? I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life? And then, <laughs> yeah, really. And then, like, then, and then after that, um, the TV station, the local TV station called, and they asked me to come in for an audition. And I was like, okay, how hard could it be, right? So I went in for an audition. My gosh, it was hard, because there were four scripts, <laughs> two of which were in Mandarin, right? And legit, my Mandarin was... I mean, it's improved a lot over the years, but I got through the two English scripts fine. One was a hosting script and an acting script, so in two languages. And then I did the acting script in Mandarin. It took me one hour to get through the script, and then I did it. And then the hosting script, I actually took a picture and sent it to a friend and said, I need some help. I can't read half of the words in it. Because hosting, it was a very like proper sort of language. And then after that, I just gave up because I couldn't. There was no way I could deliver that. And so I, I did only three out of the four scripts. Right. I totally botched that audition, so also I thought, and then I was like, okay, that's the end of that. And I went back to my life, and then the next thing I knew, like, they called me in, and they said, we want to offer you like a two-year contract. I was like, really? Wow. After I botched that script so bad? Okay, right, so then, um, yeah, and then I told my parents, and my dad was like, you're 23 years old, you know, what do you have to lose? Just try, like, it's just two years. I was like, okay, yeah. and then... Yeah. Yeah, that's how it started. Two years became three years, became four years, five years, and then, geez, that's that's really how it, how it began. So it's quite by chance and quite quite strange because I really did botch the interview so bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we always put that expectations on, on ourselves. Obviously, um, you know that company MediaCorp saw something in you that they saw the potential in you, but you're probably just too hard on yourself, thinking that you really botched that um, audition. But I mean, actually, I didn't even... you, you see the potential. 
Maybe, but I like out of the four scripts, I didn't even do the last one because I just told them I really can't. I can't read half the words in there and I can't say it naturally. You were that good in the other three. You were that good in the other three. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. I mean, <laughs> or, in English, or, or I guess. It comes back to how you started your modeling career as well, where no one else auditioned for it and you just got it by default. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it's because they, they had a contract of offer. They're like, we need to offer somebody this contract. Well, who turned up for the audition today? Jade Sia. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. She bought that. All right, man. Here's yeah. a two year contract. <laughs> because to this day, I'm like, I literally didn't even finish the audition. So I, I really don't understand how that happened. It could have been. I was the only one waiting there. It was me and like a 70 year old lady, maybe. And they were like, let's go with the no. slightly young. That's your competition. No, no, <laughs> no. But, but Jay, you know what? Somewhere in the world, there's a casting agent that used to work for Media Corp. And she, she's now in trouble because her boss is now phoning her. Like, so that girl didn't really submit all four audition pieces. <laughs> <laughs> And this was how many years ago? <laughs> this was in 20, 2006. Yeah, I graduated. Yeah, my gosh. yeah, yeah that, that person is probably retired now. And she's you know, having a quiet Saturday. And suddenly her former boss calls her. Like, you know that girl? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She didn't actually finish audition. How did she make it to like... How did she make it? Two-year yes. contract. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so from a botch audition to getting your, your contract and being in television, and I'm sure it was not easy. Now, what are some of the biggest challenges you've faced in your career? Um, I think the I think there are two, right? Two biggest challenges, and they were quite similar in that they were both live shows. And I told you, like, if you if I mean if you guys have been watching a while now and you guys no, is the reason why I said, like, Jen, what I learned from you, except I learned it too early on and didn't crystallize it then, was that I'm really bad with scripts, right? So I did this show called, uh, this live show on Channel 5, and I had so much flack for it. Like, I think people said, like, I was so stiff and so wooden, and it was because a lot of the time I was trying to memorize the script in my head, and I didn't yeah. know how to... I didn't know the skill of, like, memorizing it and then saying it like it was my own. I thought I had to remember it word for word, and... I was so bad with that. I was so bad with memorizing it word for word. And then the camera would pan and they're like, okay, like, uh, three, two, one, Jay, you're on. And I'll be like, all right, Aww. no, we're gonna yeah. like have the next contestant. So I had, that was bad because that was my first um, slew of bad press. Like I think when I was in the pageant, I was very lucky to have really good press because I just, I didn't take that too seriously, right? I just went with my instincts. It was one of those like, even for the Q&A for that, I just said the first thing that came off the top of my head. But when I did my first live show, I, was, I thought I had to remember the script. And then that was when it was bad. The other, the other really bad challenge was it was a live show. It was uh, during the Olympics in 2008. So it was just two years in. And we had this uh, live at the Games. It was like some live Olympic show. And again, there was a lot of scripting. I mean, everything was scripted. And... There was a teleprompter. I had no idea how to read off a teleprompter. To this day, when people offer me a teleprompter, I tell them I don't need one. And then they're shocked. I'm like, I really don't need one. I, I really prefer not to have one or just put the points because I can't I can't deal with that. So there was a teleprompter and I think I was very stressed up every night. And there was one night when they rolled the wrong BT or whatever. And we thought our mics were off. To this day, you know, to this day, I don't know if I said it or not, but apparently I said um, the F word on TV Right, and the funniest thing is, it, it never even blew up because we couldn't even hear the word. It was a slow day in news, one week later, that I think the Chinese press picked up on it. And because someone had uploaded the video to YouTube, and then it, was, it wasn't it was even my face, but you could hear someone mumble like the F word. And to this day, I don't know if that was me or not. I really don't know. It may have been, it may not have been, but I had a lot, I, I took the blame for that, and it was... Wow, that was tough. That was tough because um, I got dropped from a lot of jobs, I think, for the next year and a half or something. Oh, and then on top of that, my mom was like crying every day. Mom, she's mm. probably right now. Oh, she man. was, yeah, I think she was just very upset. Like, she's very protective of us and like just a lot of, I mean, it's such a small thing now when you look back on it, right? Whether I said it or not, it really is such a small thing, but. It affected my career. It affected my family like really badly. It was it was quite disturbing. I mean, honestly, I couldn't talk about it for years. I think I only started mm. talking about it like a year and a half ago when I gave like a motivational talk, and I was like, oh you know what? I'm just gonna talk about this now. 
finally after so many years because yeah it was yeah. so difficult and i was so ashamed of the whole thing i'm not sure what i was ashamed about right but then i've only recently started talking about it and i think like oh my gosh like actually such a small thing really but it was really bad at the time it was bad oh, and then every oh, night oh. i would still have to go back and do the live show in the midst of all of oh. this yeah. Wow. So what did you do to then overcome that? Because I know about this incident and even back then I thought it was so unfair on you. But how? Yeah. what did you do to overcome this? How did you get out of this? Because the press was unrelenting. They were really unfair on you. They were. I, I don't know why. I think because up to that point, I never really had any bad press. I was just one of those like people who was lucky to just not have anything bad, I guess. like. And what you see is what you get with me most of the time. So there wasn't even anything to uncover. So I think they just had a field day with this. I just lay low, which was tough because I said I'd go back to work at night. I just threw myself into the things that I like doing. Like I did a lot of sports as usual. Right. I probably picked a new sport or two along the way. I think I started rock climbing then. And then um I just I'm pretty religious, but I turned to religion. I turned inward to family for support and to friends. And then, like, I just didn't talk about it. I really, I, like, almost had a, like, a self-gag order on this. Like, literally, like, when I brought this up two and a half, like, a year and a half ago at a talk, it was the first time I let myself talk about it. I just never talked about it. I just blocked out and I just went on with it. Right? So I would, like, have no comment to any press that would ask. Any interview that asked about it is, like, a no comment. Any person who asked about it, it was, in my head, a no comment. Like, I would just, like, ah, uh, yeah, and then I'll move on from that topic. So, yeah, I think that was how I dealt with it. Probably not oh. the best way, but that was how I dealt with it. Oh, I think it worked out for you in the end. I mean, it's hard yeah. to say in hindsight. You know, it's easy to say in hindsight yeah. that you, I've got over it and stuff. I'm sure at the time it was absolute torture for you. And yeah. the fact that you had to keep going live afterwards is just incredible. And the fact that you were brave enough to do that after all that you went through. Um, and and distracting yourself and not thinking about it and concentrating on other things is probably just pure self-preservation, not necessarily a bad thing at all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like to think that I'm pretty resilient. So I think that was just me. You being are resilient. resilient. You are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well. when, something, when something like that happens, Jade, what do you do to cheer yourself up? I mean, that, that's really quite, quite something to go through. Like, what um, do you do? on your own i do a lot of sports honestly i know it sounds like a couple answer but really if i'm having a bad day i'll look at my schedule and be like you know what i have two hours i'm gonna go wakeboard for two hours if i can if i can't i'm gonna go skate if i can't do that i'm gonna trampoline if i can't do that i'm gonna go run if i can't do that i'll find a friend to go rock climbing with or I'll just go on my own but i feel like sports is such a it's such an outlet for me so when i'm sick is when it's really bad but i'm like the worst patient ever because when i'm sick and i can't do anything physical is when I'm like so antsy, I have so much energy inside. Um, and then usually I'll call a friend because the other thing that really cheers me up is company. I think being an extreme extrovert, right? Having studied this, is that I realized like the company of people really makes a lot of difference to me. So I would call a friend to do some sort of workout. If I can't do that, then I would do one of the two. Either call a friend or do a workout. And it, it usually helps me. Wow. Well, that's, that's coping really well. Um, <laughs> Would you say that I don't the, know if it is because I'm I'm really very tired by the end of the day. Um, <laughs> because I would do like three different workouts if I'm feeling very bad, I will like probably squeeze it in like that. That's a bit extreme. But it makes me feel better. It really does. And I try to just make sure the workouts are not so strenuous. Like the last one makes a long walk instead of like a twenty K run. Right. That's what you learn along the way to preserve the body. Right. So yeah. um so Jade, I mean I know you said you've got resilience, but what else do you think it is about your personality that's made you successful? Uh, I think a few things. I think that there are a lot of people actually that I was surprised to find in this industry are really very introverted. And I think that must be very hard, especially if you're a, like a presenter, because I genuinely enjoy meeting people and talking to people and finding out about people. And I think that sort of genuine interest in people makes me a good interviewer because I really just want to know. And I just really want to know like, you know, what the background is, how did you get to this point? I think that makes me a good interviewer. Uh, the other thing I think is just resilience really helps because you go through ups and downs in this career. And if you can't take like the downs, if you can't take like the negative stuff, you can't take people saying like, nowadays people are like, oh my gosh, you're so old now, things like that. You know, if you can't take that, 
then if you get really affected by that, then you will quit, right? So that that has helped me. And the last, I think, like, what has helped is this, maybe not so much when I started in 2006, but now in 2021, is being, really being yourself. Like, if you meet me on and off camera, I've met a lot of people and they're very different. And it's very, it's very disconcerting, honestly, because it's very, like, it's so incongruous. Like, I meet this person and then they are, like, a totally different person on and off camera. I don't know which is the real you. So I think that something that has helped me is that I, I'm kind of like the same person on and off, you know, um, maybe slightly bigger on, actually not really, I, I've gone thrown out of restaurants a lot of times, really, because people like, they come to tell my friends, like, you guys are just too loud, right? So I mean, that's <laughs> not like, I'm the same person on and off camera. So I think that helps as well. Like in this day and age, when people are looking for authenticity and like, just being real, I think you realize that being on and off camera, the same person, there's no real persona has helped in recent years. I realized that has helped. Yeah, I think so too. Is there yeah. um, a life lesson or a motto that you often quote to people or say to yourself? Um, because I'm extra, I'll say two, right? So two, one is, <laughs> yeah, I just can't just stick with one, right? I have to be verbose like that. So one is this two shall pass. And it's, it's very cliche, but it's something that someone told me when I was going through a very hard time. So this friend of mine, she said, this too shall pass. I'm like, what the hell is that? She said, like, apparently it's some, like, there's some long story proverb about how some king was told this. Okay, I'm not going to go into that. But basically, it's a reminder that everything passes, right? So when I'm going through a bad period, is this too shall pass? I'll get through it. I just have to get through it every day. And when I get, when I'm going through a really good time, I also remind myself this too shall pass so that I cherish it. Right? I feel like so, so much of the time we have so many good things that happen and we don't spend the time like appreciating it and so like I really like relish it and I cherish it and that's one and then the other thing I remind myself is something that Anne Frank said which is look at all the beauty still left around you and be happy and again this is something that I tell myself in a bad time mostly bad time this one because I'm like oh my god my life sucks you know we all go through the days where you feel like depressed or sad whatever right and then I just tell myself I have so much I have so much like there is literally nothing that I could want materially that I don't already have. And is that not like a blessing enough in itself? So then I, I remind myself of it and it kind of really gets me out of it, like out of whatever funk I'm feeling. I'm like, okay, I'm feeling crappy about this or that. I feel like I'm beating myself up for not doing enough today. But like, look at all that I have. And then that kind of like pulls me up a bit. I don't know if it works. I told friends this. I don't know if they want to watch me sometimes. But <laughs> just a reminder to be grateful, I guess. I think it sounds like those two mottos have really got you through some challenging times in your life. So I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And is there a piece of advice you think the 80 year old future grandma Jade would give you yourself today? Um, well, I think, I actually think more and more, it might be to just chill out. Or well, then since we were talking about the effort, the chill, the do 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 out because, <laughs> I, I more and more as I get older and as we went through like quarantine period in Singapore, I feel like I am too hard on myself, you know, sometimes. And maybe the 80 year old self would just say, you're doing good. Just chill out. Woman, just chill out. Like it's okay to wake up a bit later and it's okay to like spend a little time doing nothing. So now when I take like the morning off, like literally <laughs> two days ago, I had to deliver something to my office. And I was like, crap, I was supposed to like send it there at the weekend. I totally forgot to drop it off at the weekend. And now it was Monday and I had a 12 o'clock appointment and it was 9 a.m. And I wanted to get a workout in and I was like, I haven't dropped this off. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take all those packages and I'm going to skate the 10 k.m. to my office. And so I work out and I get to drop it off and I kind of slack off. I mean, it's kind of a slack off morning. But I tell myself like I'm dropping it off. I mean, if I had driven there, it would have taken like 10 minutes. Right, but then I decided to skate there and back, and it took like an hour and a half. But yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna chill. I'm, I'm just gonna deliver it by hand on skates. It was like a whole bunch of bags right, for a giveaway that I was doing. But you know, I'm just gonna do that and do it the way that I want to do it. And so I think the eighty year self would tell me to just chill out and just like take some time to do things if you want to do it the slow way. Just do it. <laughs> That's the Jade Xia way. Yeah, I think the, the receptionist at the office was really like nervous because I showed up like, 
it was really hot, you know. So I wore like a hat and I wore like a balaclava thingy and I wore like shades. <laughs> and I shot these bags. I'm like, yeah, these are the drop off under jets, yeah. And then <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's me, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to the office full with like my rollerblades and stuff. And yeah, I think I think she was a bit stunned. <laughs> So Jade, I mean, you know, this show is called Dear Future Grandkids and thank you so yes. much for spending time with us today to um, create this video time capsule. As you know, we always, um, we look forward to the future, to being grateful for our present. So as we close the show and you close the lid on this time uh, capsule, what do you want to say to your future grandkids? Ah, oh, okay, let me try. Dear Future Grandkids, Remember that you don't have to have it all figured out at by 18, by 28, or even by 38, 48, 58, because I'm still figuring it out, honestly. And life changes, the world changes. There's no point like pushing and planning. Just go with the flow. Make sure you enjoy life because life is such a blessing, honestly. Make sure you spend the time with the people that are important. Make sure you do the stuff that you love, even if they are pointless. Right. If you have pointless skills that you really enjoy, just take the time to enjoy them. You have pointless things that you enjoy eating that have really very low <laughs> nutritional value. Um, that's okay too. Right. And, and if you want to eat the same thing every day because you're boring as hell, that's okay too. Right. And if you want to, if you're like a really fussy eater and you don't like to eat vegetables and like you don't like to eat poultry and you don't like to eat a lot of things. And people say like, what's wrong with you? You just smile and say, I just don't like it because I just don't like it. And I just don't want to waste time chewing stuff that I don't like. And I don't want to waste calories <laughs> eating stuff that I don't like. And I'm just, you know, it's okay to be a fussy eater. It's okay to be a bit neurotic. It's okay to be the weird kid who asks your parents at eight years old, just before you're about to sleep. But why are we on this earth really, right? It's okay to be that kid. <laughs> it is. It's okay to, to like at 30 something, not feel like you're ready to have kids because you're like a big kid yourself and it's okay to just not want to do anything some days have fun be good try not to get in trouble with the law that, that that's all i will say um and uh, you do gonna do something bad just don't get caught that's <laughs> <laughs> wonderful wonderful Brilliant. message Brilliant. Yeah. you're amazing yeah, that, that's for my dear future grandkids and for my niece, yeah, I, she probably is the closest young one that I know that I'll have in the future. Take the advice. Don't 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 tell your parents I said that. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the coolest aunt. You will be the coolest grandma. I know that. I I, I like to think so. Send your kids to me. <laughs> <laughs> we will, we will. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'll be the cool the cool friend Jen to your three the three of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Can see that. Thanks, guys. This has been so much fun. I mean, I, I can't believe I've laughed. I've cried, like, so emotionally, embarrassingly on camera. I didn't expect that. You know, I, I didn't expect I would send the voicemail to my grand. I just thought, who else, right? I would send it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure who else to send it to, yeah. No, so, yeah. Thank you. You know what? My word, Jade, for you is, you said it yourself, authenticity. You're, like, probably one of the most authentic persons. I like to uh, think so. We've made. We've met. Uh, it's... It's amazing because uh, you're right. You, you just be yourself. If you want to eat the same thing again and again, and if you don't <laughs> like vegetables, why not? You know, all this talk about bacho me now, you know what I'm going to have for lunch, right? <laughs> I'm already so deciding which, which stall because now at this time, 12 is like the worst time to eat, honestly, because it's going to be crowded everywhere. So I'm thinking, which is the best stall now that will not be that crowded? <laughs> yes, not, o not only do you eat the same thing, you can talk about it so passionately. Yeah, That's he thing can. About you. He can, <laughs> and she yeah. will. No <laughs> yeah. You guys, you guys, when when COVID is over, you guys come to Singapore. Like I bring Percy, you and Ange on like a but on me. Like we're tour. hanging out. Again, you gotta come anyway. No choice. <laughs> yeah. You mean I'm not invited? The person that's well. starting all the best person you work with. Uh, no, I didn't say you're the best person I work with. I say you're the most interesting. Okay, let's let's rewind and let's. You're gonna hold this over my head, I swear, like for the rest of my life. <laughs> well, Absolutely. thank you, Jade. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Thank you, thank you for spending Bye. the morning with us. We've got. I've just got a shout out. We've got a. We've got somebody watching in New York, and uh, Jean. 
si Lubrico. She says, wow. the show has been part of my Saturday evening routine because it's on at 11 p.m. Aww. in New York. Where I'm there. She Aww. is, and she's already in bed. So have Aww, a good thanks, night, Jean. Jean. Hi, Jean. Thanks for watching. Hope you had fun. Hope this wasn't too like, thanks, energizing Jean. just for a bit. Oh, Jean. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jean. And thank you to everyone who sent us such kind comments. We are making this up as we go along. If you have any suggestions for us, any suggestions for future guests, uh, anything at all, um, we love all your comments on Facebook and YouTube. So really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you so much to all of you for watching Dear Future Grandkids. I'm Jen. That's Ange, that's Percy, and that's our wonderful guest for today, Jade Sha. I've known her for some years, and she's managed to just show you how authentic she is. She is who she really is. What you see is what you get. So thank you very much for watching. Take care, and we'll see you the next time. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, Bye, everyone. Thanks, Jay. Bye. Bye, guys.